What's going on YouTube? Omar aka Tebow back with you again. Today we're back with another build. We are going to be building the Tamiya Comical Grasshopper. I'm going to build this kit pretty much stock. The only changes are I have my box of ball bearings. <laughs> These things are always nice so I'm going to make sure I ball race this kit. And as far as the equipment used I'm using an HD Power uh, LF13 MG servo. I love these things, they're cheap and they work fantastically well. And of course for the transmitter, my trusty Futaba 4PX using the Futaba R204GFE antenna-less uh, receiver. Love these things, I mean they're just tiny, tiny, don't take up any space, which there's not much space on that chassis, on the WRO2 chassis anyways for electronics. So. This helps save a little bit of spot. If you guys have never built a kit before, follow along. If you have a comical grasshopper, all the better. Um, and I'll do a standard kit build. The only items that you need besides your kit, servo, radio, receiver, battery, and a charger are just some basic tools. Uh, Tamiya gives you all the greases and things like that that you need. And then always have an X-Acto knife, some needle nose pliers, and a nice set of Phillips head drivers. I will tell you, if you build a lot of Tamiya kits, by all means, go out and get yourself some of these Tamiya drivers. These have the JIS tips. They're slightly different in terms of shape compared to a standard Phillips head that we would get here in the US. They just fit the screws better and keep you from rounding them off because some of the screws in these Tamiya kits can be a little bit soft and if you're using a standard Phillips head screwdriver it's pretty easy to strip out the head. Using these JIS drivers prevents you from doing it. Um, I'm not sure, I think it stands for Japanese Industrial Standard in terms of what that JIS is. I could be wrong if I am and somebody can correct me in the comments. Um, enough talk about what is going to go on. Let's get into the fun of it and let's get into the build. Alright guys, you would think that the first step would be step one in the instructions, but on these WRO2s it's very important to note that the transmission comes pre-built. As I already mentioned, I'm going to ball race this, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take apart this transmission and replace all the plastic bushings, I don't know if you guys can see that in there, that Tamiya supplies you with and replace them with ball bearings. Additionally, and this is extremely important, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grease all of the gears that are in here because this thing comes set up from the factory bone dry inside there. So if you ever build any of these WR chassis, just take a moment, even if you're not going to ball race it, to take this thing apart and grease the gears in there. And here is our lovely transmission opened up. Uh, don't lose your five screws that hold the transmission together and the two that go for the motor. Also remember that the kit comes with the 18 tooth pinion. So when you put the motor back in, use the two holes for the 18 tooth. There is an optional um, two holes to be able to put in a 20 tooth pinion if you want a little bit more speed. You know, with these things, I, I don't need the more speed. So I'm gonna take the time now and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all these bearings popped out and we'll replace them with some ball bearings. I've replaced all of the uh, bushings with ball bearings on there. Just be sure when you are greasing these guys, you just need a light, light coat of grease. You'd be surprised, grease goes a long way so you don't have to overcoat it or anything like that. I've already put one of the first uh, gears in there and I'm gonna go ahead and get the other ones put in. Always helps to put them in in the right order. So that they all fit the way that they're supposed to. Uh, be aware of which way that you put the differential gear into it. Uh, it is going to go with the screw heads on this side. Make sure all gears spin. There we go. A little bit of the grease all over everything. And we are ready to button this back up. The 
It's always the tricky part, mating the two halves. Making sure everything goes into its holes. Usually if you just shimmy it a little bit, you can get most everything to go. These are the hardest parts to get them to line back up inside the holes over there. There we go. Beautiful fit. And we'll tighten this guy back up. Okay, we have our gearbox greased up and ball raced. Uh, just a word on the screws, any Tamiya kit, or for that matter, any kit, when you are tightening these, just go hand tight. You don't need to crank down on them. Um, that is a sure way to end up breaking it. So our very first step is gonna be building our front, or excuse me, our rear arms. For that, we need our two rear arm pieces. The only thing of note is that they are keyed. So if you guys can see, they have these little markings. Make sure that those two are gonna line up and on the other side line up um, as well on that too. Uh, does that stick? Because I'm putting it in backwards. So. They are going to go in just like that. And that is gonna be our arms. Before we do that, we do have two little ball connectors. So we'll grab our T-wrench and put them in. They are going into the hole closest to where the wide part of the arm is. Next, we're gonna be attaching our rear arms to our gearbox. We have our upper arms. They are shaped in a very specific manner, so just pay attention to the instructions and make sure you get them on there right. We have our hardware. This one's a pretty easy, straightforward step. And there we go, we have our rear arms attached. Um, I wanna make a note, just with these screws and any hinge pins that hold arms, or anything like that, make sure you don't over tighten them. You want all of these parts to move freely with no binding. And then a final note that I wanna make is this new plastic that Tommy is using on these arms, I love it. Um, it is very different from any of the plastics I've seen them use before. So. For those of you guys who've built this kit, I don't know if you notice this compared to the other ones. Could just be me, but I'm the kind of guy that uh, I happen to notice these kind of things. So, there's our gearbox with our arms. Step three is going to be putting together our wheelie bar and attaching it to the rear transmission as well as putting in our gearbox joints. Wheelie bars are pretty straightforward. Um, just make sure you well, you really can't mess this up. It only goes together one way. And it's held together by two of the three by 10 self-tapping screws. We'll 
we'll go ahead and attach this guy. And for this, we need our four longer three by 18 millimeter screws and the four aluminum spacers that Tamiya provides you. You know what? On this particular step, do it one at a time. I've done this before, and if I don't have a camera to my left here, I would have no problems installing this uh, with one hand, but I'm trying to be very careful to make sure that I don't end up pushing the table so that you guys don't get a real shaky camera view. It always makes it a little tricky when you're doing these builds with a camera. All right, we have our wheelie bar mounted, and then we also have our two gearbox joints in. Just giving them a spin, making sure everything in that gearbox is working, because now would be the time if you did something wrong and they're not spinning in opposite directions for you to go in and fix it. In step four, we're going to be attaching our rear uprights, axles, and drive shafts. Again, I'm using ball bearings. One other word too, um, I'm a stickler when it comes to flashing. If you're not aware of what flashing is, when you cut parts off of the part trees, there's usually a little nub left behind and that's usually referred to flashing. Flashing also can refer to, if you can see this mold line in here, um, if you have excess plastic sticking up from those, that's also flashing. I always take my X-Acto and smooth them out, especially on uprights, any part that's gonna be moving and has a potential if it's got a big nub on there that could get hung up on something. So I make sure to clean that up. This step, pretty straightforward. We're just gonna go ahead and um, put our bearings into the uprights. And I find that if you just take your axle and give it a push, it'll seat the bearing in there very well. Don't forget your O-rings. Tamiya has you do this all the time. Uh, it just keeps the drive shafts from popping out at extreme angles on suspension, compression, or rebound. I just like to use the little Allen wrench that they give you just to kind of push them in there. Just makes it pretty easy to get them seated in the bottom of the cups. They have a tendency to stay there. They generally don't fall out of there too too easily. I like to attach the uh, uprights to the main arms first. Step five in our build is going to be assembling our servo saver assembly here. And a couple things that I like to do when I am putting these 
cars together. You'll notice that on my ESC, I've changed out the Molex, or what everybody refers to as the Tamiya plug, to a Deans. I like to run Deans on pretty much most of my cars. Um, on my quads, I do run XT60s. Um, and of course, I have a couple big cars that run those. But on the majority of my 110th cars, I use the Deans plugs. Um, there's two things in this world I hate. And <laughs> one of them are those horrible, horrible Molex plugs or the Tamiya plugs. And then the second thing that I hate is going to be in the step after this one, which is putting together turnbuckles and, and rods and things like that together. So as far as this goes, um, it is pretty straightforward. We have our parts here. I am missing a, there we go, a little washer that I need. Um, we're going to start off by just putting in the ball ends or ball connectors into our servo horn. Again, just like the screws, just keep turning until you feel it seat itself. You don't need to go any anymore because you could strip out the plastic and once it's stripped out well then you need a new part there's no going back I did take a moment to get my ESC calibrated I centered my servo that is extremely important be sure that uh, you take the time to center your servo also, make sure that you get the correct little uh, piece that mounts to your servo. Um, I am using this HD Power, which goes off of a standard Futaba. Um, Futaba servos tend to be uh, 25 splines, or they have 25 little teeth on the servo. Um, one thing you'll notice is that that piece should be perfectly at 90 degrees with the case um, but as is the case with all servos you'll have to use your sub trim for that last little bit I didn't bother doing that um, that's just something that's not that big of a deal to me I can take care of that after the car has been built um, Tamiya does recommend in their manual for a self tapping screw but this servo having all metal gears metal servo horn and all that um, use the correct type of screw. You don't want to put a self tapping in there to one that's already been tapped because it is just going to result in some damage on your part. So this is probably going to be the quickest step that we deal with. Let's get our screw nice and tight in there. go. As you can see it is just slightly off center but again I will use my sub trim to straighten that out. So step six is attaching our tie rods which I've already built and our servo mounts to the servo. A couple of things that are quite important here. Um, as I mentioned just a moment ago I hate assembling tie rods so I did these off camera. I will tell you, if you don't have a set of these, go get yourself some shock pliers. Um, not only will they make you so much better at building shocks without marring their shafts, um, but they also make any tie rod jobs very, very simple because you just have a wonderful thing to be able to grip with to be able to screw on your pieces to it. Um, the other important piece to note here is depending on your servo. So in the instructions, if your gap between the top of the servo mount and the top of the case is more than eight millimeters, the servo mount piece needs to go in like this. If it's less than eight, which in my situation it's six, it needs to go with that little uh, molded piece that you can see there compared to the other side facing up like that. So I just laid my pieces out in front of me so I know which way they go. One last word while I'm talking about tie rods, Tommy Emanuel's give you the one-to-one -one diagram. So most people tend to take their tie rod that they built and match it up to the page. I will tell you this, and I've run into this on two Tamiya kits, and for the life of me, I can't remember which ones they are, so I do apologize about that. But 
I have run into the situation where the manual wasn't actually one-to-one. -one. So if you have a set of calipers, use those. And on this particular build, we are from the inside to the inside, going to be at 35 millimeters. I measured both, they're exact. So let's get our servo mounted on here. And you do have a washer that you're gonna put on top. Of your screw, that goes in, and we just need to screw this bad boy in. These little servo mount pieces, again, they are out of that new plastic, um, just like the arms. It is a wonderful, wonderful soft plastic. It makes screwing uh, into it just so simple and very, very easy to do. Again, don't over tighten it. You will strip it because it is such a soft plastic. It's so soft I can start threading the screw in with my finger. But I appreciate that they have on that on the arms because it's going to result in bends rather than breaks. Okay, so we have those screws mounted and the last thing we need to do is, I can move this stuff out of the way, we can just go ahead and use our needle nose pliers and snap our tie rods on. One. And let me get this one going here. One of my favorite memories is uh, watching one of Axiomatic's build videos. And uh, Ax was all excited. He was getting ready to snap these on. He's like, you just have to snap them on. And then he cut <laughs> because he had an issue and he had to go get his pliers. Anyways, that is our servo ready to go and step six done. With step seven, we are going to start attaching our chassis halves together with the servo in there. We have 10 of the three by 10 self trap tapping screws and don't forget this one little washer. Um, that particular washer is gonna go on to the screw that goes on the slide right over here. So, our servo is gonna go in like so. Pass your tie rod, I'm sorry, I'm off camera, but pass your tie rod through the opening. Make sure your servo lead doesn't get all your screws through there. Where did I put my screwdriver? There it is. All right, so start with first screw. And we'll match that up. I love doing builds for you guys, but there are some challenges, and I know Simon Michael has brought this up, who's been killing it with his build videos on his art, on his Nordic, RC Visions channel that, uh, you know, when you do these build videos, sometimes it is very difficult to see what you're doing because the camera is in the way. Um, at this point, with the servo, just be loose with the screws because you got to line everything up, make sure it goes. Again, don't forget the washer. Um, that is going to go, you know, depending on the size of the servo that you have. Not all servos are exact. So this washer allows you to get a slide lock when you tighten that screw in there. Once again, hand tight. But you do not want your servo to move. Now that we have that piece in there, um, we can go ahead and slide our tie rod through the other end. Be aware of where this is. You want that above the chassis. Um, yeah, I know you can pull it through if you accidentally screw the chassis halves together and have it on the inside, 
But keep in mind your electronics are going to be mounted somewhere up here. So you want to be able to have the cable ready to go. Now we just have a ton of screws that we need to put in here. So I'm going to start with the top one up here. How many more do we have? One up there, got one right up here. See how soft it is? I can just push these screws right into this plastic. I love working on good plastic like this. Who was I watching? Oh, Mal. I was watching uh, Basilton Trailblazing Buddies video. He's building an Axial SEX-102 raw builder's kit. And, uh, <laughs> poor guy, on his, um, it was pretty crazy with the axial, I think it was the transmission piece, it's this new gray plastic that they have on the raw builder's kit that they did not have on my SCX-102 uh, kit, the Cherokee kit, and man, he was having a hard time with it because it was such hard plastic. Um, it really gave him a little bit of a workout, but he got it going in the end. All right. By the way, all these people that I'm mentioning, um, by all means, go go to their channels, check out their videos. They do great content. Um, Axiomatic RC, Basildon Trailblazing Buddies, and uh, one of my favorites, Simon Michael over at Nordic uh, RC Visions, and I think it's Nordic RC Hobbies, which is his main channel. All right, now that we have the two halves together, final little bit that we have is this little front piece. I think this is where the uh, little bars and things go into. And then we got four screws left. This guy, it is kind of keyed. It has a guide, so can't really mess it up. Let's get your screws in there. All right. We are humming along on this build, and for all of you who are watching, I really want to thank you. Um, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit that like, and make sure that you hit that notification bell. I do a lot of videos, um, not just builds, but running videos. Um, I fly FPV as well. I occasionally put up FPV videos. So I have a lot of content on my channel. And be sure to hit that bell so that you're notified whenever I have new videos available. Anyways, enough self-advertising. Yeah, let's get this last screw in here. Very nice. Okay. Now that I've done that, this is going to be the end of part one for this video. So let's just do a little recap of what we did with our Tamiya Comical Grasshopper. We started out, we took the gearbox apart, replaced it, uh, the bushings with bearings, and put grease on all the gears, which they don't include. Once that was together, we got our arms in place. We got our shafts and everything ready to go. So the rear suspension and the wheelie bar. We moved on to our main chassis. We centered our servo, got the electronics sorted, got our tie rods, got the servo saver on, installed the servo in the chassis, put the chassis halves together. So this is where we are with the build, the end of part one. I anticipate just having uh, one more part on this, which will be completing the remainder. Uh, not much left. We have our front arms to go. We have the shocks, putting the pieces together, putting the wheels and tires on there, and then we will have a running comical grasshopper. Again, thank you guys for being with me, and I will see you on the next video.